Hi everyone, it's Evangeline here at eTrailer and today we'll be taking a look at the Rocky Mountains Monorail 2 bike platform rack on our 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV. So this bike rack is going to be very versatile. So whether you have heavy electric bikes, if you have fat tire bikes, if you have step through bikes, this can carry those types of bikes. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the different specs, the different features, but we are going to focus on our Bolt EV today. That way you can see how it works with the vehicle and then you'll be able to see what is the better fit for you, your different types of bikes, and your Chevy Bolt EV. The first feature we'll take a look at is the tilt away feature. So we have this bright blue lever here. You're going to want to pull that lever and then just let that rack drop down to a tilt. And why would you tilt your bike rack away? Well, if you want to open up your hatch with your bikes on. So as you can see here, lifting this up, look at how much space you have between your door, your pedals, and your handlebars, a lot of it, which means you can reach into your trunk and grab whatever you need. So whether you need to grab your helmets, your bags, your waters, you can do so super duper quick without having to take your bikes off. And once you got what you need, you just lift up on the rack and there you go. It snaps into place. You're ready to go hit the road. This has a weight capacity of 60 pounds per bike. So for your heavier electric bikes, perfectly fine. But what other bikes can it carry? Well, with the way this holds your bike down, you have a rear wheel strap and then you have this front wheel mount. So I like pretty much any bike rack that has that front wheel mount just because it makes it easier to mount and dismount my bike. But also, if I have a carbon fiber frame bike, if I have a women's bike, if I have a step through frame, those other bike racks that have hooks that come down could possibly warp or crack that carbon frame. Plus, you would have to get a separate adapter for those other bike frames. With this, I don't have to worry about any of that. But when you want to take your bike off, you start at the rear wheel strap. So you just press that lever that disengages the strap and then you can lift this up. And I like to just fold it over to the side so it is out of the way of our spokes. Then I go over to the front and I hold on to the bike with one hand. I press this lever with the other, push that hook up, then push that hook out. And from here, it, all it takes is just grab my bike and I'm ready to hit the trails. With the bike off, we can take a closer look at the rack itself. So we have our rear cradle. This tilts back and forth to accommodate different wheelbases. If you have it all the way out, the maximum wheelbases can carry is going to be 48 inches. Oh, you also have those grooves on the inside for the different tire widths. So whether you have your thin road bike tires or your really wide fat tire bikes of up to five inches, this secures all of them with a nice ratchet strap right there. Then we have our front cradle. So that has the grooves as well for those different tire widths. And when you're not carrying a bike on there, it actually folds down to be all nice and neat. Then you have that front wheel mount. And we talked about how much I like that. What I actually do when I put this away is I tilt our rear cradle to the um, inside position. Then I just push that in behind it to secure it. Now, when you carry anything on your hitch, what tends to happen is that it takes up some space. So let's take some measurements to see exactly how much length is added from the back of our bumper on our bolt to the end of the bike rack. It sits at 31 inches. So that's a measurement to keep in mind whenever you're backing into your garage or trying to park into a really tight spot. The good news is that your Bolt EV is a very small vehicle, so you don't have to worry because you have a lot of clearance left. Now, another the clearance we are gonna have to worry about though is gonna be ground clearance. So, measuring from the bottom of the rack to the ground here, that's gonna be 15 and a half inches. And then from the bottom of the shank to the ground here, it's nine inches. So where your hitch sits on your Bolt EV is kind of low to the ground. So you wanna make sure that if you do have a hitch accessory, it has a shank rise like this, that way your bike sit higher up off the ground. And when you go up those steep inclines, like those driveways or hills, your bikes are less likely to hit the ground. Now, what if you're not planning on going for a bike ride just yet, but you also don't want to take your bike's uh, bike rack off? 
What you can do is you can fold this up into the portable position. So we have that lever here. You're gonna pull that lever again, but this time you're gonna lift up on the rack and it snaps into place there. So taking some measurements, like the closest point, good thing our bumper curves that way. Then our clearance there is from that bumper to the back of the, or the front of the bike rack, it's gonna be three and a half inches. Plenty of clearance, no worries about this accidentally hitting our car. Um, for the length now added to the back of our bull DV, from the bumper to the end of the rack, it's gonna be 12 inches or one foot exactly. So big difference compared to when this was folded down. You want it in this position when you're just planning on driving around town, but you don't want to take up too much space. But what is it like living with a bike rack behind your vehicle all the time? Well, one thing I'm curious about is if we have hatch clearance with it folded up. And right here it hits that front wheel mount, so that's a no for clearance there. But it's still going to be a compact bike rack, like our rear window is completely visible, our tail lights are visible as well, and our license plate and our backup camera are not covered by the bike rack, which is awesome. As you drive around, you're both legal and safe on the road. So there's actually two versions of the Rocky Mountain monorail for two bikes. And one is gonna have an inch and core shank, the other has a two inch shank. The two inch shank is what I always recommend if possible because you have that great stability and the ability to add up to more than two bikes. But it also depends on what kind of hitch receiver you have on your bolt. So here we have our Eagle Hitch 2 inch hitch receiver. This pops right into the shank. You tighten it down with a, I believe it's a 3 quarter inch socket. And then you have this lock on the end. That lock is key to like to the lock you can use with your cable ox. That way you only need to use one key to tighten everything down. Once you've tightened down that anti-rattle bolt, by the way, we have three quarter inch wrenches with sockets here at each trailer. If you need an extra, let's do a quick shake test to just demonstrate how that works. <laughs> As I shake our bike rack back and forth, you can see how the vehicle itself was shaking, showing that that connection was nice and secure. My personal thoughts about the Rocky Mountain monorail bike rack is if you're not sure what types of bikes you're carrying or if you have different types of bikes of different shapes and sizes, I would definitely go with this. It's really easy to put your bike on there with that front wheel mount, everything tightens down and you have that great weight capacity. Now, if you want something that has like a smoother movement, especially when you tilt things away, uh, something worth considering is the Kua NV. Very similar design, same weight capacity. That one has the ability to add on a ramp, has integrated locks, things like that. But on its own, very versatile bike rack, works wonderful with our Bolt EV. I kind of wish I could open up this door, but it's just an easy pull of that lever, bring this down, and you're ready to hit the road. Here on our test course, we'll start by going through the slalom. This is going to show us the side-to-side -side action, which simulates turning corners or evasive maneuvers. Once we get to the alternating speed bumps, we'll see the twisting action. This will simulate hitting a curb or a pothole or driving over uneven pavement. Now lastly, we're going over some full speed bumps and we can see here the up and down action and this will just be like driving in and out of a parking lot, garage, or driveway. And that was a look here at our Rocky Mountains Monorail 2 bike platform rack on our 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV. My name is Evie Angeline and I hope you enjoyed the journey.